From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is the hotel operator, Mr. Dollar. Will you cut off? I, uh... Tell her not to let any more calls in here. Go on. I was cut off, but I'd rather get some sleep now. Anybody phones, just take a message. All right, Mr. Dollar. Over there. Sit down. Put your hands on your knees. Now, just so as you and I understand each other. You make one move. Wiggle a finger, I'll empty this gun right in your stomach. You understand me? I understand you, Forbes. You're crazy. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Richard Porter, 480 Webster Boulevard, Providence, Rhode Island. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Shepherd matter. I was pretty sick of it and with it when I had Paul Forbes visit me in my hotel room about 7 o'clock in the morning. He used a gun in front of me once before to crack my skull. I decided I'd try to avoid that again. So I sat down and I played good. It didn't seem to please him a bit. You were out to my house about an hour ago, weren't you? Yeah, I went out to talk to your wife. Yeah, I saw you. I was across the street watching. I followed you here. Fixing up another deal, huh? I don't know what you're talking about, Forbes. I followed you here so we could have a little talk. And we're going to have it, you and I. You ought to put that gun away and let them take you, Forbes. Where do you live? In Hartford, Connecticut. I mean, where do you live in town here in Providence? I don't. I live in Hartford. Where do you practice? Practice what? Are you trying to get funny with me? I don't practice anything here in Providence. I don't live here. I'm just here for a few days. Doing what? Working on an insurance matter. Insurance matter? You're licensed to practice law in Rhode Island? Oh, you've got something all wrong, Forbes. I don't practice law. I'm not a lawyer. I'm an insurance investigator. I tried to tell you that yesterday morning when you cracked me with that gun. I was called in by Dr. Shepard. He said you threatened his life. You're lying to me. Shepard called me yesterday morning and said a lawyer named Dollar was on his way over to talk to me about getting Pauline a divorce. You're a lawyer! I'm what I say I am. If you hadn't started swinging that gun butt around, I'd have told you why I was there yesterday. You got a billfold or something? My coat pocket inside on the back of that chair there. I think I know why Shepard called you and told you I was a lawyer. I think he wanted you to attack me and make me Shut a... Shut up! You and Shepard are trying to pull something to take my wife away from me. I know that much. And now you're trying to pull something to get out of this jam. You're wrong, Forbes. I don't know anything about trying to take your wife away from you. You know I didn't kill Shepard. How do I know you didn't kill him? You threatened him. Half a dozen people have attested to that. I know you had a reason to kill him. I know every time I've seen you, you've had a gun in your hands and you've been swinging it at somebody, particularly me. You know who did it. You're in on it somewhere, you know who killed Shepard, and you're going to clear me. You're going to tell me, Dollar. I'm going to whip it out of you. You're going to go crazy. Go. All right. Get on your feet. He sat in the chair just the way I propped him there. His eyes looked dull and lifeless, as though he were already dead. I couldn't think of anything brilliant to say or do, so I rummaged around my suitcase and pulled out a bottle. Then I found a pair of glasses in the bathroom and poured a couple of drinks. When I came on out, he hadn't moved from the chair. He looked crumpled like a worn-out suit of clothes. He made no effort to look at me when I tucked the glass in his hand. Here, try this. Huh? Go on, go on, drink it. Why don't you call the police? Now, you say you followed me here to have a talk and find out what's what. Now's the time to talk, pal. This thing isn't the best conversation piece in the world. Leave me alone. Call him in. Hey, you have something going for you here. This gun hasn't been fired. Do you have another one? No. No, Dollar, I didn't kill Dr. Shepard. I wanted to more than anything in the world. But I didn't kill him. Now, look, I want some facts. So let's start with last night. Where were you when Shepard was shot? 
How do I know where I was? I... Uh... I don't even know what time he was shot. All right, let's start with yesterday morning. You slugged me, ran out of the house, jumped in a car, and what happened? Go on, take it from there. I drove over to Dr. Shepard's office. I was going to have it out with him. He was breaking up my home. Well, go on. Did you see him? No. I parked down the street from his office, and then I saw him jump in his car, and I followed him. He came back over here. I knew my wife must have called him to take care of you. What happened then? I went over to the park and... sat and tried to figure things out. You don't know what I've been through this past year. All right, go on, go on. Then I went to a bar. I was hungry. I hadn't eaten all day. I got a couple of sandwiches and then I had some drinks. I don't know how many. Anyhow, the, the more I drank... The more hopeless everything looked. Did you call Shepard? Yeah. Yeah, I, I called him from the bar. Any idea what time it was? Must have been around five or six. What difference does it all make? I'm cooked and you know it. Go on, will you? You called Shepard. Then what did you do? I told him I wanted to talk to him about everything that had happened. I told him where to meet me. You mean you wanted Dr. Shepard to come down and meet you so you could kill him? Maybe I did have that in my mind. I don't know. On the phone, he sounded so calm and said we could talk it out and straighten it out like gentlemen. Did you talk to him? No. I didn't see him at all. I waited an hour and he never showed up. I called his office back and the answering service said everyone had gone out for the day and I, I didn't know what to do. I got back in my car and turned on the radio and that's where I heard I was wanted for murder. Dollar, I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. I had reason enough, but I didn't. I knew all about the others, but this was wait serious. A minute, wait a minute, what others? Pauline's always had other friends. <laughs> friends. I, I guess... I don't, know, I, don't, I don't guess I love her anymore. I don't know. I don't think she ever loved me. But I needed her. I needed her more than anything this last year or so. And at times, I, I did love her the way it once was. And I found out what was going on between her and Shepard. She wanted a divorce. I wouldn't give her a divorce. If I had let her and Shepard get away with it, it would have been too much to take, to ask. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Even though you didn't love her and she didn't love you, you wouldn't stand still for a divorce action? It sounds stupid. I just told you. I needed her so much this last year or so. So much. Still doesn't make any sense, Forbes. Why didn't you let her go? She knew she didn't have to divorce me. She knew it wouldn't be too long. What? Shepard gave me a year. Another doctor in Baltimore, 18 months. Leukemia. Don't you see? She would have been free. They could have waited until I was dead at least. Just that until I was dead. Couldn't they? Well, couldn't they? Expense account item 10, $2, sleeping pills. I fed them to him along with a cup of hot chocolate. He looked pretty worn out, and within 15 minutes, he was sound asleep in my bed. Item 11, $4.16, one long-distance phone call to a Baltimore clinic where I spoke with a Dr. Franz Mueller. Dr. Mueller confirmed what Forbes had said. Forbes was doomed with an incurable ailment. Item 12, 20 cents, another phone call. This one from the hotel lobby to the coroner's office. I learned that Shepard had been killed by 32 caliber slugs. Forbes' gun, a 32, had not been fired or hastily cleaned. His story was checking out. That left just one small item to be cleared up. Expense account item 13, $4. Taxi fare from my hotel back to the Oakdale home. Special rates for nurses. Hello. I thought you'd be back to see me. Somehow I'm glad it's you, Mr. Dollar. Go ahead. That's an old story. Terribly old and corny. I applied for a job as Dr. Shepard's nurse five years ago, and I fell in love with him that very day. I've loved him every day from that time on. Five years. Go on. 
I don't know when it was when you started up with Mrs. Forbes. I knew she was trying to get a divorce. I knew Mr. Forbes wouldn't stand for it. Then one day, last week I guess it was, I heard Doctor talking to her on the phone. He said, there's a way to get rid of him. I knew he was talking about getting rid of Mr. Forbes. Did they discuss the part about Shepard getting Forbes to threaten his life in front of witnesses so he could shoot him down when the time came? No, I didn't know that until yesterday morning. So long ago, it seems. You came to see Doctor, and then you left. I overheard him on the phone again. He called up Mr. Forbes and said Mr. Dollar was coming over to talk about the divorce action. And he knew Forbes would be upset enough to attack me. Doctor was very good about anticipating what people would do in given situations. <laughs> Even me. I was in the office when Mr. Forbes called last night. I saw a doctor put the gun in his coat. I knew he was going down to meet Mr. Forbes and shoot him, so I followed him. He was walking around in the dark looking for Mr. Forbes with a gun in his hand. I ran up to him and pleaded with him not to be crazy, that Mrs. Forbes wasn't worth it. Then he said he was going to kill me, too. We struggled. The gun went off. I don't know how many times. I can help you, Corinne. He didn't mean to kill him. He meant to shoot you. When all these other details come out, the most they can charge you with is second-degree justifiable or manslaughter. No. You're nice. But I can't get off. Huh? I guess the police haven't found her yet. I went over and... killed Mrs. Forbes an hour ago. Expense account item 14, same as item 1. Transportation back to Hartford. The next time you have a doubtful insurance application, Mr. Porter, settle it yourself or call someone else. Don't call me. As far as I can add up, and I'm not going to recheck the figures, expense account total is $485. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, the case of a lonely heart that found plenty of company in the nearest morgue. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gene Bates... Virginia Gregg, Russell Thorson, Parley Bear, Herb Ellis, Barney Phillips, and Lawrence Dobkin. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.